Good evening, and welcome to Senator Mark Begich's live telephone town hall conference call. My name is Max, and I'll be your host for the tonight's meeting. Thank you for joining us. We hope you find this call informative and useful. In a moment, Senator Begich will join us with some opening remarks. The purpose of this call is to give you an opportunity to speak directly with Senator Begich. Senator Begich has received hundreds of phone calls and emails about the federal budget and potential shutdown of the federal government. And that is why he wanted to take the opportunity to speak directly with you tonight and take your questions. If you have a question for Senator Begich about the federal budget or potential government shutdown, you can press star 3 on your phone to ask a question. Again, press star 3 on your phone to ask Senator Begich a question about efforts to avoid a government shutdown or the debate about our federal budget. As we hold this town hall, debate continues in Washington, D.C. about passing a federal budget for 2011. Currently, funding for the federal government will expire at midnight in Washington, 8 p.m. in Alaska. Without funding, all but the most vital government services will cease and federal employees will be instructed to stay home. That is why Senator Begich wants to hear directly from Alaskans. So please, press star 3 on your phone to ask Senator Begich a question. Again, you can press star 3 at any time to get in line to share your thoughts with Senator Begich. We'd like to get through as many of your calls as possible, and to help us accomplish this goal, we must limit all callers to only one question. If your question is chosen, your name will be called, and you will be connected with Senator Begich and asked to repeat your question. Please remember that you can press star 3 at any time to ask Senator Begich a question. And now, here's Senator Begich with an update on the debate in Washington, D.C. Thank you all for joining us, and not only on the phone call, but those that might be live streaming us. Uh, we wanted to uh, put this out this evening just to give you a quick update of where we are. It's 9 o'clock here in Washington. We're about three hours away from making a decision of uh, the government shutdown, or do we continue to ensure that we have a long-term funding for the remainder of this year. Uh, I wanted to make sure you're aware. I know there's a lot of information that's floating uh, out there regarding the shutdown and what it means to Alaska, but also what's happening back here in Washington. For, first, I want to make it very clear that between the uh, Senate and the House, it seems we have come to an agreement on a number uh, of what we would reduce from the federal budget for this fiscal year, which were almost 60 percent of the fiscal year uh, completed. Uh, the amount is about $78 billion. Uh, it would be taken out of discretionary funding, uh, some military funding, and then some uh, uh, programs that are mandatory programs. But I know a lot of people are trying to figure out what's the, what's the delay. Well, the delay is over uh, some issues that have come up on the Republican side in the House uh, by a very small group, but it's basically issues that are related to some social agenda items. So we're busy trying to work through those. There's a little bit of uh, last-minute controversy back and forth if we have come to um, uh, the the agreement on some of the language. Uh, we'll see over the next few minutes. We're hopeful that we'll hear something from the majority leader on the floor of the Senate. But for the next 45 minutes, I hope to be able to answer some of your questions, uh, give you some additional information. Uh, but I want to make sure you understand if there is a government shutdown, many of the departments within Alaska will be touched. But first, let me respond to many calls we received on the military. Uh, there's no question uh, in Alaska the military is a very important part of our economy, but also, as you know, several have uh, serving overseas. And I want to make sure uh, you know that. Uh, but let me first say that uh, we are going to make every effort to ensure that the military, uh, if there is a shutdown, is paid. Uh, people who are worried about that, we know they'll be on the job, they'll be earning their pay, uh, we are working in a bipartisan way as we speak right now to ensure that they get their paycheck. Uh, we have to make that happen. Uh, they put their lives on the line for us. And let me make it very clear. It's not just the active military, but the Guard, Reserve, and the Coast Guard as uh, the whole uh, military that defends our country here at home as well as overseas. But there are going to be some issues. Uh, for example, on the military, we have a quarter of a billion dollars worth of construction projects going to be uh, done and developed and, and built by private sector companies. Uh, those are on hold if a shutdown occurs. That's an important part of our economy, but it's also important to keep our military bases uh, operational. Through the Interior Department, which handles all our national park services and wild, fish and wildlife, uh, the national park services will be closed. The concessions will be closed after about 48 hours. Uh, many of uh, the emergency issues, maybe the volcano and earthquake monitoring, will continue, 
what other activities will be uh, one by one. The, the uh, Rural Development Forest Services, other agencies under the USDA. If you're uh, waiting for a, a home loan under USDA, which affects many of our rural communities, uh, those will no longer be processed. Those will be suspended. Uh, the Forest Service, only the law enforcement will be handled. Uh, farm loans will be discontinued. The EPA, which, you know, in Alaska we love to hate them, uh, but the fact is routine permitting review will cease, which has a direct impact uh, to our OCS, our Outer Continental Shelf Development on air permits, and the resolution to our 404 fill permit for CD5, which is up north trying to get the oil development moving forward. Uh, with regard to transportation on roads, states will not be reimbursed for any expenditure on a federal project. Uh, veterans Affairs, uh, health care services at this point will not be affected, uh, but cemeteries may go into reduced schedules. Uh, other VA benefits uh, may be affected with staff reductions. If you're just turning the age to receive your Social Security benefit, the odds are uh, you will not be able to have that processed uh, because we will not have people to do that. Uh, if you're uh, uh, providing or going for a home loan and you're using the Federal Housing Authority, FHA, uh, if it's a new loan or loan in process, those will be suspended. So there's a lot of impact uh, to our state in many, many ways. Uh, the Postal Service will not uh, uh, be affected, so it will continue to operate. So let me, again, make it clear that uh, we have a lot of issues that will be impacted. And besides all the federal government issues, we are going to have an enormous amount of private sector impact. And what I mean by that, many companies we do business with as the federal agencies all across the state, they contract with uh, small Alaskan businesses, big Alaskan businesses, and they will not be able to execute those contracts. So it will, uh, again, have uh, a lot of impact. Uh, I wanted to make sure we got on the phone here with Alaskans so they could spend the time to understand what this means uh, to Alaska but also to our country. I'm hopeful. Uh, we have agreed, as I said, three-quarters of the way, $78 billion of reductions. Uh, we, uh, on our website, feel free at a later time if you want to look at many other suggestions we have on cutting the budget. We know we have to get this budget under control. We know we have to get the deficit under control, and we have to reduce our debt. Uh, that is basically uh, holding us hostage for many years to come. But uh, we are working late into the evening here, and we're going to try to do our best to make sure that a shutdown does not occur. I have no interest in seeing a shutdown occur. I think that would be bad for the economy, bad for Alaska, and bad for the thousands and thousands of people in Alaska. Let me now turn, uh, I know we have questions online, and let me try. As I'm sitting here, those who are watching us live streaming, I have a computer that I'm looking at that as the phone calls come in, I'll be seeing uh, hopefully the name as well as the subject matter, and then I will try to answer them, and we'll roll through the calls as quickly as possible. Thank you again for joining us this evening. If you are on the call and would like to watch the video online, you can go to Begich.com, uh, or excuse me, you can go to Facebook.com slash Begich, where you will find a link to the live stream. You can also go to Livestream.com slash Begich. Both of those sites are carrying the live stream currently. If you have a question for Senator Begich this evening, you can get in line to ask your question by pressing star 3 at any time. Again, to ask Senator Begich a question this evening, you can press star 3 on your phone. Our first call this evening will come from Ian and Palmer. Ian, you're live with Senator Begich. Hello. How are you doing, sir? Very good. Thanks for calling in. Uh, my question was, is if the military can cut $100 billion out of its budget just because uh, Secretary Gates said that it needed to be done, why is the federal government um, bickering over $78 billion? Well, let me make sure the, the, the $100 billion is over a longer period of time. That's over five years. The federal uh, budget of the military is well over 500 and some billion plus uh, the war. So that military budget, when you include uh, the regular operations, the military is just shy of $700 billion. Here's the debate. We've been debating over just 13% of the budget, what they call the discretionary fund. The discretionary fund is only 13% of the total federal budget. That's why it's been hard to squeeze out uh, these kind of cuts because they want them all in one year. But we, I believe, have, again, come to an agreement 
for this year we're in currently 78 billion. Also, let me make sure that uh, uh, folks understand that we only have about five months or so left in this year, so we're taking the 78 billion out of just the last five months of only 13 percent of the budget. So in reality, it's probably closer to about 140, 150 billion dollar cut, and again, only 13 percent of the budget. So uh, the military, that's why we want to, people like myself and others, we want to get on to the 2012 budget. So then we can look at all of the budget aspects, discretionary, mandatory, military, find where the right cuts are in a larger sense. Again, as I've mentioned on my website, multi-billion dollars worth of opportunity. But we're only remaining four or five, five or six months remaining in this year, and that's where the, uh, the heartache has been. But, but I believe this 78 we can get there. It's painful because uh, it's only, again, 13% of the budget we're cutting out of. But when we get to 2012, we'll look at the whole budget. Our next call this evening will come from Dana in Anchorage. Dana, you're live with Senator Begich. Hello. My question is... Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead, Dana. Okay. My question is, is how is this shutdown or supposed shutdown going to help hurt our people that work at the Army Corps of Engineers and the part of the Department of Transportation that works with the FAA? Well, if it's a construction project, I can tell you, uh, again, as I gave that example on the military construction, that's all managed by the Corps of Engineers. Well, those projects won't happen. They'll be installed until uh, they understand where they're going to get the money to pay for the projects. So just in our military construction that the Corps of Engineers is responsible for, that's about $220 million ready contracts out of about $400 million that they have available to expend on uh, clearly needed projects uh, throughout our military bases. In regards to the road projects that, that the Corps or folks are involved in, uh, the state will be responsible for any of those federal dollars uh, they expend during this uh, shutdown. The FAA projects, and that I'm, I'm assuming you're referring to the airport constructions and renovations, some of those will not continue, again, because they do not have the money. The only ones that may continue are those that create a life safety condition with regards to airport landings. But if they're projects that have not interfered yet with the uh, airport landings and takeoffs, uh, more than likely those projects aren't going to happen until the shutdown is resolved. We'd like to thank everyone for joining us again this evening. If you'd like to ask Senator Begich a question, you can press star 3 on your phone. Tonight's call is also being live streamed on the Senator's Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Begich, as well as his live stream channel, which is livestream.com slash Begich. If you go to either of those sites, you'll be able to connect to a video feed, and you can share those links with anyone you please. Our next call will be coming from Anna in Anchorage. Anna, you're live with Senator Begich. Good afternoon, Senator. Good afternoon, thank Senator. It's nice to make yeah, your acquaintance. You. Um, my profession is aviation, and I have been fielding questions all day on whether or not TSA screeners will be impacted by the shutdown. The information I'm getting from TSA is the answer is no, but I'm also getting the conflicting information from the managers and from the supervisors. Do you have an update? My understanding is, and again, one thing that will happen is every uh, department uh, should have on their website what the impacts will be for their agents. But TSA is a public safety issue and will continue, my understanding, to continue to operate. Now, some of their back office work that may be here in Washington and elsewhere will probably have some layoffs. But those gate operators, my understanding is they will continue to operate. Thank you for your call. Our next call will be coming from Alan in Kenai. Alan, you're live with Senator Begich. Hi, Senator Begich. Just wanted to check yes. with you. I uh, understand the, the problems. You were pretty clear on those for, for the current issues. I was wondering what you were planning for future deficit reduction. Absolutely. Thank you for that. And that's actually where I want to go because this skirmish that's going on is really delaying the big question. Uh, when I ran in 2008 for this office, I talked a lot about the deficit, uh, the spending, and uh, to be very frank with you, not until late fall did people in 2008 want to talk about the deficit. They really had no interest. I remember going to many town hall meetings, and it wasn't top of the agenda. But here's the issue. When we get to the 2012 budget, 
I've laid out many suggestions, again, on my website and have encouraged folks like yourself and others who might be watching or who might be interested in, in uh, going online afterwards to send us your ideas. And I've listed out some ideas. For example, I believe if you're a, a, an owner of a farm that nets more than $1 million profit, and usually that's not a small farmer, that's a big corporate farmer, we should no longer do the subsidy. That's $2.5 billion. If we could just negotiate our prescription drugs, for example, ensuring that uh, Medicare uh, can get the lowest cost, that's well over $20 billion every single year. If we could uh, get rid of some of these loopholes, these tax loopholes, that are designed to reward people who move their companies overseas, that costs us well over $100 billion over the next 10 years. Uh, I've supported a piece of legislation that has passed the Senate, and there's another version that has passed the House that gets rid of what uh, these earmarks, which I'm a big fan of earmarks, but if you haven't used that earmark after nine years, if you haven't used more than 10% of it, then that has to be returned back to the federal treasury. That is worth almost a billion dollars. I'm signing up with another piece of legislation where we have surplus property throughout the federal government, and these are not uh, properties that are of value to anyone. They're boarded up buildings that are just being caretake. Uh, they're under caretake uh, status within many departments. We believe that's worth well over $15 billion. But again, I've listed out, and I'll continue to list out more ideas because we have to get this deficit under control, and it means a combination of things. Along with that, I will say uh, we introduced a piece of legislation, bipartisan, on tax reform. Because as you reduce the deficit, you have to create opportunities for companies and businesses to grow the economy by a much more favorable tax situation, not only for corporations and small businesses, but individuals. And we've done that, too. So uh, I, I, if you have some ideas to add to it, please do so, uh, because I want to get on with the 2012 budget and have some great ideas that we can uh, bring forward. Our next call this evening will come from Michael in Juneau. Michael, you're live with Senator Begich. Good evening, Mark. Yes. The question I have for you tonight is, as I understand, Congress will be paid while all of the federal employees are on layoff. What are your what are your comments on that? And if it's true, what are you going to do to fix this? Well, first, thank you very much. Uh, let me backtrack first and say, for the last two years, uh, I have not only not taken a pay raise that Congress has been granted uh, or been proposed to be granted. I've also sponsored legislation last year to make sure we did not get a pay raise because of the way the economy was. Second, in regards specifically to the shutdown. I have sponsored legislation that said no one, Congress, on the House or the Senate, as well as the President and Vice President, should not take one dime of their pay while the shutdown occurs. Uh, that has not passed the House. We've sent it over to the House waiting. But I, in the meantime, I've signed a letter with several other senators saying uh, if after the midnight tonight uh, we're not uh, if we're shut down, then every dollar that I earn until we're back in business I will contribute and give to charitable contribution. Uh, no question will be an Alaskan uh, operation, Alaska charitable contribution, or give it back to the Treasury. But we haven't done our work. So if we're in a shutdown like every other federal employee, then we should also have the same situation and not take the pay. We will have a couple employees here uh, out of our crew of employees uh, just taking care of kind of critical issues. But our office will be shut down. There will be a voicemail. Um, that's how we're going to operate. We are no different than other federal agencies. So I'm not intending uh, to take the pay during the shutdown. I will contribute it to a nonprofit organization. Thank you again for joining our call this evening. If you'd like to ask Senator Begich a question, you can press star 3 on your phone at any time to get in line to ask a question. Again, press star 3 to ask a question. For those of you that are viewing online, we welcome you. You can feel free to share the link with your friends at facebook.com slash Begich or livestream.com slash Begich. Our next question this evening will come from Antiot. Antiot, you're live with Senator Begich. Go ahead. I believe we lost her. Our next question will come from Chuck in Soldatna. Chuck, you're live with Senator Begich. Yes, thanks for calling, uh, taking my call. Um, and we all know that the budget 
uh, and the deficit are, are major issues. And my, respectfully, my question is for you, Senator, is uh, the Democrats, why uh, would they not have passed the budget back in October? Actually, that's uh, not correct. We had every single appropriation bill pass the committee in a bipartisan way. Almost every single one except a couple passed unanimous. Those bills came to us uh, in a lame duck session after we have done a couple continuing resolutions to keep the budget moving uh, in the lame duck session. We brought those forward, and then the Senate on the other side, the minority, did not just decide not to vote for them. We brought the package. We brought the whole budget forward. That's actually one of those what I call blogosphere rumor mills out there, as well as talking heads who like to tell people what they think and really don't look at the facts. Uh, and I'm telling you, we, we brought the bill forward, and uh, the minority decided the bill that they supported in committee unanimously, almost every single one of those appropriation bills, uh, just a few had maybe two Republicans against it, decided when it came to the floor not to support it. So we have tried, uh, but when they decide not to support the bill, they support it in committee, then no bill passes because they've also required to have 60 votes for everything. So we had plenty of votes, more than 50, but we couldn't get to 60, and all we needed was a couple Republicans. That's it. If the two or three that voted in appropriations that had supported the legislation in a bipartisan way would have voted, we would not have this conversation tonight. We would have a broader conversation on the 2012, talking about jobs and the economy, how we're controlling the deficit. That's what we would be having a conversation about. Our next call this evening will come from Tim in Anchorage. Tim, you're live with Senator Regich. Good evening, sir. Um, I'm a 100% disabled veteran, and my question is what is going to happen to the VA during the shutdown, and will I receive my check next month? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks for your question. The VA health care services will not be affected. Your benefits that you're re receiving now in the form of a check and that you're getting now should continue to move forward, and you should get that. Uh, cemeteries may go into reduced schedules, and if you're applying for other benefits, that will be slow to happen because staffing levels will be reduced. But the checks that you, the disability check that you receive and or the clinic need that, that you have uh, will continue. Our next call this evening will come from Ian and Palmer. Ian, you're live with Senator Begich. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes. Uh, hello. Thank you for uh, taking uh, the time to answer my question. Uh, my question is specifically on... Um, how much uh, of the $72 billion, I believe, uh, that you already quoted, is, does that include the amount of reductions that were passed in the continuing resolutions that have already been passed? Or is that in addition to that amount? Yeah, the total amount is actually 70, uh, approximately $78 billion. That includes the first 51 that we have passed in the last few months. And it's shy of the hundred billion that the House had started at. Uh, so, in literally, it's come three quarters of the way to where the House wanted to go on a hundred billion. Pretty significant, seventy-eight billion. But it does include uh, the ones we've already done. Plus, we're adding more to it, literally as we speak right now. Thank you again for joining the call this evening. To ask Senator Begich a question, you can press star 3 on your phone. Again, you can press star 3 to ask Senator Begich a question. Our next call will come from Rebecca in Anchorage. Rebecca, you're live with Senator Begich. Hello? Hi, Rebecca, please. Hi, uh, Senator Begich. Um, do you think the Republicans realize the extent of the shutdown in terms of tourism and the National Park Service? I'm just thinking if the shutdown continues, there will be no spring climbing at um, Denali, there'll be no spring hunting at Antiochak. There'll be no national monument to go to in Washington D.C. after someone has saved for years to see this national monument. Do you do you they do they realize the extent of how this affects the whole tourism thing and how tourism in our country is really an important part of the economy? Uh, Good question. Uh, they can only answer that. I can tell you from Alaska's perspective, you just hit it on the head. 
that, as you know, like Denali, has well over 100 employees that get prepared right now to prepare for an incredible season. They'll scale that back to 12 just to caretake the facilities for emergency and uh, safety issues. Um, I know people right now that, that are in Alaska that are traveling not only throughout our state but other states going to our national parks who have set up trips with their families, have, as you know, hiring small uh, businesses to maybe take them on their, if it's a rafting trip or bringing them into the park or it's a camping outing. All those are small businesses that are organizing those for many, many visitors, and those small businesses will not be operating because they will not have customers because they can't get them into the national park system. And in Alaska, it's a $2 billion business, our visitor industry, and it will have an impact. I know operators right now in Alaska that are getting calls, and they're having to field these calls to ask and find out, are they going to be open or not? So um, your your point is well taken here in this office. That's why we're aggressively working. As I said, it's a little after 9 o'clock here. We're going to work all the way through midnight. If we have to work through the through the night, we are going to do our best to make sure the government is not, not shut down because for Alaska, it has enormous impact. We'd like to thank everyone for joining the call again this evening. After the call, you can get in touch with Senator Begich at his website, which is begich.senate.gov. You can also like his government official page on Facebook at facebook.com slash Begich. You can follow Senator Begich on Twitter, which is Senator Begich. You can also sign up for future telephone town hall meetings by visiting his website and sign up for his biweekly newsletter. During the during a potential government shutdown, the best way to get in touch with Senator Begich will be through his website by sending him emails, which can be viewed at begich.senate.gov. Our next call this evening will come from Jackie in Anchorage. Jackie, you are live with Senator Begich. Oh, yes, good evening, Senator Begich. Good evening. Um, I had a question. I'm a military widow, and as a widow, my sister that lives in North Pole is also a military widow, and... I'm concerned because I don't understand how Harry Reid and Barack Obama could even consider not paying our military. Uh, to me, that is un-American, and it's just unacceptable. I just don't understand. I can't even comprehend that. Well, Jackie, let me say uh, I don't want to put the blame on any individual because everyone here, Republican and Democrat, have the responsibility to solve this problem. And because we don't have a budget, everyone's to blame to where we are right now. Let's not uh, put disparaging words on anybody that's individuals. But I'll tell you, there's no question in my mind that what we're doing, what I'm trying to do, what others in a bipartisan effort are aggressively working right now, literally as we're on this phone, the Senate is in session right now. Uh, we're trying to get the language taken care of to make sure no matter what, as those folks that are putting their lives online, the servicemen and women of this country and the ones obviously from Alaska, that they are going to make sure, we're going to make sure that they receive uh, the pay uh, for the work they're doing. And we are working on that literally as I'm sitting here talking with you tonight. But it's, it's not one individual's point here because all of us are in this collectively and uh, everyone can make a decision here to have us get to the final uh, decision here, and that's not having a shutdown. And right now, uh, we are aggressively uh, working on a solution. Our next call this evening will come from Ray in Eagle River. Ray, you're live with Senator Begich. Uh, thank you. First, let me commend you for holding this uh, town hall and for uh, running a professional office every time I've called. Thank you very much, Ray. Uh, yes, sir. My, my question uh, is that $78 billion, or $100 billion for that matter, is a drop in the bucket with our out-of-control spending. It doesn't even come close to addressing a $14.5 trillion debt. So once past this immediate uh, issue, what is the plan to put the country on solid financial footing? Thanks, Ray. I, I will. I agree with you. It, it is a drop in the bucket in this bigger problem that has occurred not overnight, but over the last decade. Again, both Democrats, Republicans, the current president, the past president—they all participated in growing this debt to where we are. The fact is, we are where we are. I've been here now two years, and my view is we just got to get busy. And here's a couple things that that we've done 
Now, I've been one of the few Democrats that supported a constitutional budget, balanced budget amendment, which I think is important. Uh, I have made sure, even though we may not like the TARP program, uh, but I made sure I was one of the first, actually the first Democrat to sign on with 39 Republicans to make sure every dime of that money, when paid back, must go to pay the national debt, the deficit. Uh, most amazing thing, that is not only paying itself back, it is showing a profit. We will have over $700 billion going back to pay the deficit on that number alone, and that's because we've had good financial conditions over the last two years, growing the right direction, paying those off. Uh, but we have plenty to do. I think the Bipartisan Debt Commission uh, suggested almost $4 trillion that we could uh, ratchet back over the next 10 years. I've signed a letter in a bipartisan way supporting their efforts. Not necessarily agreeing to every single detail, but their effort is the right effort. Uh, again, there are many efforts that we've laid on the table already. Uh, and, and I have to be very frank with you that, you know, I, I have an eight-and-a-half-year-old son, uh, and I look at what he's going to have to face in the next 10, 15 years if we don't get this under control. And it means we're going to have tough decisions. There are no more easy decisions left around this place. Those that think there are, they, they're probably going to be retiring soon. Uh, because the tough decisions are here. And it means we're going to have to have some tough love with a lot of groups that have been down here lobbying for years trying to get their special deals and telling them time is over. No more can we afford to do that. We don't have the money, and we got to figure out how to balance this. But we also have to make it fair. And what I mean by that is as we deal with the spending, we also have to have a fair tax reform policy. Again, uh, Senator Wyden, a Democrat, Senator Coates, a Republican, myself, laid down a piece of legislation a couple of days ago to create a fairer system to reduce corporate taxes and small business taxes from the second highest in the nation to about midstream, taking the six individual rates that people pay down to three rates, keeping it simple so it's done on one page, and it's deficit neutral, but it will help spur growth which will also help our economy and help us move this debt down. So we have to do it from multiple fronts, not just the spending end, but also figuring out how to encourage our businesses and individuals to grow. So our next question is going to come from one of our live stream viewers. Uh, our live stream viewer, Ryan, asks, without playing political blame games, how can Congress as a whole face the American people? Well, I I'll tell you, it's, it's not easy. Uh, it's why I'm on the line with you right now. Uh, because I think we have to step up to the plate, explain what's going on. I am embarrassed by the way this process works around here. Uh, I can't, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, first off, I can't, I can't even imagine when I was mayor if I would have said, we're closing down the city and we're not going to do any snow plowing or we're not going to pick up the trash or we're not going to have the police department working or the fire department. Uh, that is just unbelievable that that's the way it works here. And there's a lot of us new guys here that are trying to shape and change the way we do business here because it's not responsible, and I agree with you. And that's why I'm not bashful about getting online like this, telling you what I think is happening here, and taking my responsibility as everyone else should. Some of these guys that don't want to take any responsibility, to be very frank with you, I don't care if they're a Democrat or a Republican, uh, that's irresponsible on their part. We're all in this. we got to solve this problem from an elected position, but also all of us in this country, because it means we're going to have to give up some things to make this work. Our next call this evening will come from Betty in Anchorage. Betty, you're live with Senator Begich. Thank you so much. I'm curious about, uh, Senator, the status of funding for Planned Parenthood, where it stands well, right now. Yeah, let me, yeah, if I can step back and just say that this is one of the remaining issues. It's Title X funding. This is for family planning. And Planned Parenthood is a very small percentage of this. Actually, in Alaska, the state of Alaska receives over $500,000 of this money. The municipalities get almost $600,000 of this money. The city of Anchorage, matter of fact, for a health clinic that's there. This is resources that are put on the table for the purpose of providing health care for women throughout our state and low-income families. And it's, and it's everything from cancer screening uh, and a variety of other types of health care uh, capacity within these clinics. And I'm just, this is one of the debates. They want to eliminate it. But I will tell you, as mayor of Anchorage, 
every mayor, from the very conservative to the very liberal, has always supported the clinic support because it doesn't do abortions. It doesn't do any of that. It puts money to help people have prenatal care, cancer screening, uh, other types of services that low-income families and women need uh, that may be in need of some of the services, and that's what we provide. So right now uh, it is not being uh, reduced uh, at the level or eliminated is what they had planned. Uh, so it's not being eliminated at this point, but that's still in negotiations. Our next call this evening will come from Warren in Anchorage. Warren, you're live with Senator Begich. Well, hello, Senator Begich. Uh, this is Warren McGee, and I've, uh, I've had the pleasure of meeting you and shaking hands with you back in the good old days when you were mayor here. <laughs> Well, thank so you I very appreciate much. all your hard work and staying up late to try to uh, try to uh, do your part. I appreciate your hard work and, and, and doing all that you can to uh, uh, keep, keep the government from shutting down. Uh, well, maybe a couple questions, but one quick one. Uh, I'm on Social Security, and I just wondered, uh, you know, in this coming Wednesday, I'm supposed to get my Social Security uh, through electronic fund transfer into my bank, and uh, I just was wondering whether uh, that will be a, a yes or a no or don't know. Uh, that's a yes. You will get your check. Um, people who receive Social Security checks will get their check. The issue will be if you are turning the age to receive Social Security benefits, they will not be able to process that for you. But if you're receiving a check today, you're going to get your check. Our next call this evening will come from Rick in Eagle River. Rick, you're live with Senator Begich. Hi, Senator Begich. Thanks for taking our call, and thanks for um, just bringing us into the loop a little bit better. Um, I wanted to say that I, I appreciate your perspective about not taking salary during the shutdown. I think it's a great point of view, and um, really uh, any government shutdown is caused by a failure of diplomacy. And since the number one job of our representatives is to um, run the government on behalf of its citizens, I, I, just, I just think that's the right perspective that you're taking about not taking salary. And I wonder, like right now, um, there's a lot of, you know, fervor about who's getting paid, who's not getting paid. But when this blows over, and one day we'll be in the black again, I wonder if um, that that might be the most appropriate time to introduce legis uh, legislation that mandates that if there's a government shutdown because of a failure um, to negotiate on behalf of all the legislators, that they take a, um, a significant at least a pay reduction during that time. And I think your colleagues would find that very motivational. I, I think you're absolutely right. And I, and I know uh, personally it's the right decision to make. And, uh, you know, sometimes when you take someone's paycheck away, of an elected official especially, they get a little motivated. And uh, your point is also a broader one, which is our job. We may not always get what we want in total, but it's figuring out where the balance is, it means compromise and keeping us moving forward. I don't like all the $78 billion worth of cuts, but we got to do it. Uh, we got a tough economy in front of us. We have a budget that needs to be balanced, and we, we got to deal with it. And it means sacrifices and some of the things that we maybe really don't want to see reduced as far as they are, but we got to do it. And uh, so I agree with you, but that means all sides, all sides need to compromise, not just one side. And I think $78 billion, three-quarters of the way there, is not bad for the remaining five months. And then we'll move on to 2012, and I pretty much guess it will be much more significant and a longer-term plan. But I appreciate your point. We'd like to thank everyone for joining us again this evening. Tonight we do have a poll question for our call. Tonight's poll question is, do you believe the federal government should be shut down? To answer tonight's poll, you can press 1 for yes and 2 for no. Again, tonight's poll question is, do you believe that the federal government should be shut down? Press 1 for yes and 2 for no. We'd like to remind people that after this call, you can visit Senator Begich's website at begich.senate.gov. On his website, you can find links to his Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash begich, or his Twitter account account, which is twitter.com slash Senator Begich. Our next call will come from Elijah in Copper Center. Elijah, you're live with Senator Begich. Yes, uh, good evening, Senator. Uh, my question is, why can't you uh, convince the Senate to vote on one of the two measures that's been approved by the House already so that we can avert, avoid a shutdown and take another week to hash this out, especially since we've all acknowledged that we're just down to really small differences in money? Uh, your, uh, 
question again, a good one. Here's my view on these. Every time you give more time to an elected group, they'll take every minute up to the last minute. At a certain point, you've got to just draw the line and say, make a decision. Because what I've learned around this place here in two years that uh, the Senate and the House prefer not to make decisions. If I did this as mayor and not made decisions, we would not have many of the things that we did in the sense of new road projects, better fire and police stations. you got to make a call, make a decision. And the House has a version, but they have all these social agenda writers on there. They're trying to legislate policy uh, through their own uh, issues that are not related to the budget. And what we're saying is we will debate those, but we will debate those separately. We've got to keep the government running. We've got to reduce expenditures. Let's focus on the economy, on jobs, and the budget. And we want what we call a clean continuing resolution. Take all this junk out of there, and let's get on with doing the budget. But I, I, at a certain point, you know, if you keep giving elected officials, if I remember this when I served on the Anchorage Assembly, if we gave the clock until midnight, we'd take until midnight. But when we changed the rules and said you had to have more votes to go past 1030, guess what? We got a lot of business done by 1030. So what we should do here is just say enough is enough. This is not a complicated issue. We've decided on the amount. It's $78 billion. Let's cut the deal, move on, and get on to the bigger issue, which is figuring out our larger, long-term sustainability of this government, because that's what the American people, that's what Alaskans have been telling me over and over again. That's what they want to see us focus on. We'd like to thank you for joining the call again this evening. Following this call at the 6 o'clock hour in Alaska, you can watch Senator Begich on a live interview on Channel 2. Again, Senator Begich will be doing a live interview with Channel 2 News for those in Anchorage. Our last call this evening will come from LaToya in Anchorage. LaToya, you're live with Senator Begich. Hi, Senator Begich. How are you doing today? Very good. Thanks for calling. Um, I had a quick question regarding the military. That and the fallback on um, the communities that are kind of supported by the military um, basis. Well, are we are the military going to be receiving full paychecks, or are their paychecks going to be cut in half? And have they even thought about how that's going to affect the surrounding places? Like I know in Fairbanks, we had um, we basically were Fairbanks on top of some of the people that were there. Like how is that going to how is that going to affect you know the surrounding communities if the military bases are not getting um, like adequate funding for the families? You bet. Great. Again, another good question. Thanks for all the callers that have given just such good questions. First, again, we are working on literally, as we're talking here, I'm getting emails in regards to what's going on on the floor, and we are working to make sure that every military family, every active military guard, Coast Guard, they get their paycheck uh, because they they are critical for our national security. They are putting their lives on the line, and for us to uh, have the military as a pawn in this game, I think, is a, is a disgrace and, and is outrageous. So, uh, literally, we have 78 uh, sponsors on a piece of legislation right now to make sure you get your paycheck. But the second part of your question is, I'm not sure people uh, around this place uh, really understand. Uh, I think they're going to start hearing about it, and as from a lot of small businesses that I know are going to be hurt by the money that will not be expended by families who might go off base and buy product, and even some of our commercial business ventures that are on base that provide services, there's going to be a direct economic impact, not, again, only to our federal employees, but to the small businesses that support so many in the restaurants that have people that come off base to have lunch and have breakfast and dinner. These, are going to, these businesses will have impact. That's why we're, again, trying to avoid this shutdown. Uh, as I've said at the beginning, this is a huge mistake for us to move to a shutdown. But we got to draw the line and say, time to make a decision. And I'm ready to make the decision. I'm ready to vote for that $78 billion reduction. I'm ready to keep this government open. I'm ready to get on to the bigger issue, which is the 2012 budget, and continue to figure out how to get us onto a balanced budget. At the same time, making sure we have good, solid tax reform for long-term growth of this country. So I, I understand clearly the impacts of what's going to happen on the business, but we're going to make sure the military gets their pay. And it won't be a half check. It will be a full check. We'd like to thank 
everyone again for joining the call this evening. We apologize that we weren't able to get through everybody's calls. If you do have a question for Senator Begich, you can stay on the line and automatically be connected to Senator Begich uh, through a voicemail. He'll be happy to answer your voicemail with a letter in the future. In your voicemail, please leave your name, an address, or an email address that you can that Senator Begich can get back to you at. Again, Senator Begich's website is begich.senate.gov. You can follow him on Facebook at facebook.com slash Begich or on Twitter at Senator Begich. With some clo closing remarks is Senator Begich. Thank you all very much for joining us tonight. I know it was a little rushed, but I wanted to give you as much as possible. Uh, I'll be on uh, Channel 2 News here in just a short few minutes to give a continual update of what's going on here in Washington. We're going to work throughout the night to get this resolved. We are hopeful, uh, as I'm always very positive about where we are, but it's been tough. Uh, but well, let's get on to the 2012 budget so we can have some big long-term decisions that will benefit uh, the government, ensuring that we have a continual and sustainable budget, but also making sure Alaska families are protected and that we have good long-term budget practices here. But again, thank you all very much. Uh, for those that are going to send emails, we will respond, but I will tell you, if we are shut down, be patient, because we may not be able to respond as quickly as we thought, because we will not have the staff here until we get back up on operation. Thank you all very much. Have a great evening. Thank you again for joining the call this evening. Senator Begich will be live on Channel 2 News in the 6 o'clock hour. If, those, if you are in Anchorage, you can watch Channel 2, KTUU, to see Senator Begich interviewed on the budget situation and the possibility of a government shutdown. Again, if you had a question for Senator Begich that you did not get an opportunity to ask, if you stay on the line, you will be able to leave a voicemail for the senator, and he will respond to your question. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're interested in signing up for future telephone town halls, you can do that at Senator Begich's website, begich.senate.gov. Have a wonderful evening.